All right, guys, today we're reviewing the new Drac Rapid XG. This is interesting because it's somewhere in between an electric scooter and a full size e bike. So, this is a scooter, and this is my electric bike that's covered in salt. And yeah, side by side, we can see that, of course, it's the shape of a bike, but like the scooter, we don't have pedals. So there's no chain to worry about, no grease. It weighs just 32 pounds. I mean, this thing is just so light. It's kind of like a BMX bike. And we have dual batteries here. And the, the mechanism is pretty unique. There's a little latch on the bottom and the batteries just slide up like that. And just to demonstrate, we do have two batteries. The capacity isn't huge. This thing is not a, a spec monster. Uh, the voltage here is just 36. I've never ridden a 36 volt vehicle before, so I'm gonna see what kind of power we have here. And even with the two batteries, the combined amp hours is just 8.4. And the rear hub motor is 500 watts. So it's very minimal, and I'm excited to see what it's capable of, especially in these freezing conditions. I think today definitely calls for the heated gloves. I've been outside for five minutes in my hands. Ugh. So the bike is on, this is the display right here. Kind of, uh basic fully charged and it's on the highest power setting so we get all 500 watts here and let's go all right let me put my visor down before my eyes freeze okay so even though this is low power because the thing is just so minimal 32 pounds i mean this thing just goes i am getting scooter vibes but also bike vibes. According to this, we're going 20 miles per hour. I'm not gonna bother pulling out my phone to confirm because my hands will freeze within five seconds and it does feel like 20 miles per hour. I also feel kind of a, a little bit goofy on this, not gonna lie. I'm really starting to appreciate smaller PEVs, you know, true micro mobility. Ugh. Ugh. Something about their minimalist design, ease of use, utility, price is quite attractive. Okay, why am I waiting like a car? I'm a scooter bike thing. And as I'm riding around here, I thought the lack of suspension was going to be way more noticeable. And I mean, you can see how cracked up these roads are. And it's really not, it's not terrible. I mean, it's completely doable. I'm not in pain yet. See, the ride's surprisingly comfortable. Come on, <laughs> keep up with traffic. Okay, I probably can't ride in the middle of the lane like I'm used to doing. But touch a bit more on the lack of pedals. I think that's actually a really smart design choice here. If you want to be all legal about it, that's acceptable because top speed here is only 20 miles per hour. E-bike laws, ugh. you can go 20 miles per hour without pedaling. So because we don't have pedals, we don't have to worry about uh, the chain constantly looping it up. That's something I hate. I always forget to loop my chain on my primary bike and it's already like super rusted. It's just kind of a pain. It also adds weight to the vehicle, especially when we're talking just 32 pounds total here. And personally, I find pegs just to be more comfortable, right? Your legs are even in the same position. Ah, oh, okay, I need suspension for that pothole. Okay, we're approaching a, a steep hill here. Let's see if this bike can, can make it up. Okay, we're already losing speed. 15, 14. Maybe this is the downside, not having pedals. You can't really assist the bike, but we're, we're making it. It's kind of leveling off here before it gets steep again. 17, 18 miles per hour. All right, totally doable. You know, for only being 500 watts, 36 volts, the thing is uh, surprisingly peppy. 
And again, I think that comes down to the size of the vehicle. You expect to have less power with smaller vehicles, but here the, the power to weight ratio is still okay. And yeah, this is probably the steepest part of the hill and we're maintaining almost 15 miles per hour. It's not bad at all. Definitely would like more speed, don't get me wrong. But it's doing it. It's doing it. And yeah, the riding position here is fairly comfortable. It's upright. I did lower the seat to achieve that riding position that I, I prefer being upright. And because we just have pegs here, it's okay to lower the seat as much as you want. And to touch quickly on butt comfort, you know what? I've never been there. And that changes today on my little Jackrabbit XG 500 watt machine. More uphill. You know, if you want, you gotta use this as a scooter. <laughs> Give it a little, this is actually increasing my speed right now. Life hack. Uh, what is this magical place? This is like uh, a big 65 plus community at the top of this hill. Be the seat. It's not like a super wide seat, but I found with bikes, the thing that makes the seat uncomfortable isn't necessarily just sitting on it. It's pedaling. This motion is what, for me, after I pedal for a while, instantly causes butt pain. So because we're not pedaling on this device, I really don't experience butt pain. Even though the seat isn't crazy padded or anything like that. But this is a regular bike seat, so you could change it out with anything you want. But that's an important note. Butt pain with biking is a result of pedaling. Another reason why I prefer pegs. Okay, how much battery do I have left? Okay, I have three out of four bars. Oh no, this is a dead end. Okay, well, this was uneventful. <laughs> I, I really am having fun on this. I've been researching more into uh, high-powered electric scooters. Previously, that was something I completely ignored. I was strictly into electric bikes, and I think most of my audience kind of falls in that same category. But after getting my first ever high-powered electric scooter, it's been like a, a very eye-opening experience because honestly, there's not that much different between a scooter and a bike. And with a bike like this, that is extra true because we don't have pedals. This is essentially a, a seated scooter bike hybrid. But okay, let's talk a little bit about pricing. So this bike right here that I'm sitting on is $1,750. For that price, you're only getting a 500 watt motor and this road is not properly salted and it's very steep downhill. I might have to deploy my landing legs. But for the price, you're getting uh, 500 watts, uh, a pretty small low voltage battery. You could definitely achieve a higher ratio of performance per dollar spent with other vehicles. But the fun factor is very high with this product and the maintenance is essentially nothing considering that we don't even have a chain. I mean, for maintenance, the only thing you really have to do is charge the batteries and occasionally adjust the brakes because unfortunately these are using mechanical disc brakes. I always want to see hydraulic, but I can see why they chose that on this bike because you're not going that fast. So mechanical is good enough. But on the other hand, considering the price tag, uh, they should have had hydraulic disc brakes. So that's your first look at the new Jackrabbit XG. This is a more powerful, capable version of their OG model, which physically is very similar, same kind of idea. But the OG is only half the power at 250 watts. And I think only half the battery capacity too, because it only has one battery versus the two we have on this system. And I'm just a huge fan of small micro mobility vehicles in general. That's why I'm becoming uh, more enthralled in the electric scooter world. And this product certainly falls into that category. It's a bike scooter hybrid. It's a ton of fun, super nimble, easy to carry with you. It takes up like no space in your garage. It may not be super practical out here in the suburbs, aside from just around town activities. But if you live in an urban environment, I can see something like this being a great alternative 
if you don't want to have a, a huge bike to carry up and down a flight of stairs and you'd rather not get a scooter, you want a bike format, this is right up your alley. And this XG model has just enough power in my opinion. 250 watts on the OGs, that's a, a kind of not a lot, but 500 watts, 20 miles an hour, is a much more usable power range. And by the way, we went six miles and we have three out of four battery bars. That's not too insightful. So in a second here, I'm gonna to try to and see what our max speed is. Uh, I have to be in the road now because I'm taking this left. Because max speed is dependent on voltage. So that's a better gauge on how full or empty the battery is right now. So before when we had a full charge, we hit 20 miles an hour, no problem. And yeah, we're still hitting 20 miles per hour. Maybe not quite as fast, but Right now we're cruising at 20, which means that the battery still has plenty of juice left in it. As it dies, the top speed you're gonna see it will slowly fall off a cliff. But even six miles in, which is plenty for getting around a city, we still have plenty of juice reaching that top speed, no problem. So I'll go ahead and leave this bike link down below if you guys wanna go check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.